Let's pretend for a minute. Let's pretend we're out in the middle of nowhere. There's no cell signal, no Wi-Fi, no carrier pigeons, nothing to get our message back. And then calamity strikes. We break our leg. Meerkats attack. Something horrible happens. We're nowhere near communication. Which do you want? The new iPhone 14? Not a real iPhone 14 yet. Or a Garmin GPS map 66i with satellite messaging. Now to be sure, the new emergency satellite messaging service in the new iPhones is extraordinary. The fact that you can have satellite messaging in a form factor this small, something that can send a message way out to space, come all the way back down and get you rescued or get the aid that you need when you're nowhere near a cell signal. It's actually, it's, it's really dang amazing. Apple says the service won't be ready until November of 2022. So until then, we're kind of making a couple of guesses and conjectures about what it actually can do based on what Apple's released. They say that there's going to be an app on here uh, when you slide the slider over for emergency SOS. And if it doesn't have a cell signal, it puts a little icon up at the top showing that you're gonna be using satellite. These are the basics of what emergency operator would be asking in order to figure out what kind of aid needs to be sent to you. So that basic information is collected. It also sends along your medical ID information if you set it up in your phone. And then it sends your current location as well as the battery life on your phone. It's going to take all that information and send it to a satellite. Now this is a directional antenna that's going to be in these iPhones. It's not like the Garmin with this big old chunky antenna up here that can send in every direction. It's omnidirectional. So it sends out to any satellite that it can find. The antenna in here is only going to send in one certain direction. So in the app, when you go to make a, an emergency call, emergency message uh, to be sent, you're going to wand it around. It's going to show you where the nearest satellite is. It's going to tell you to keep pointing in that direction and send your message and start the process of getting you the help that you need. It needs to be pointed at the satellite, both sending and receiving. So it's going to tell you to keep pointing at that satellite. Now that satellite, because satellites are traveling all around, uh, they don't stay geostationary, at least not the ones that are using this type of communication. They're going to, at times go beyond the horizon and they're gonna disappear. Another one will come up. This is only available in Canada and the United States to start with. So it's going to be the satellites that are over uh, our two countries. So you're gonna keep this pointed and then if satellite goes away, you're going to then point it at another satellite and it'll tell you if another satellite is going to be uh, in range and how long it's going to take so you don't freak out. But it's going to be a slow service, basically. It's, you're gonna be able to connect, send your message. It says it'll take about 15 seconds. That is definitely an optimistic guess on their part uh, because just of the way the antenna is and the nature of an emergency, you're not gonna always have the most steady connection. So it's gonna take a while. Even those of us that have used satellite messengers for a while now know that with an omnidirectional satellite antenna, it's not instantaneous, not every time. So sometimes it takes a little bit longer. This is going to allow you to send a message and it's either gonna get routed directly to a service provider or it's gonna go through an Apple center and then dispersed to whoever can actually respond to it best. So that part of it is still in the works. We have another uh, month or more before this goes live. So I'm sure those details will be forthcoming when we get closer to November. The idea is that you'll be able to use the Messages app to be able to message back and forth. You're gonna be limited in the number of characters and the less characters you send, the better, because it will actually send faster. This is like modem speed. If you remember modems back in the 70s and the 80s, that slow. So you're gonna to wanna to keep your messages short and concise. And again, this is great to have as a backup. I can foresee in the first couple of months after this goes live, there are going to be a number of news articles and specials about the fact that this saves somebody's life. And I hope that it does. I hope it's a service that actually is useful to many people. But there's also going to be a number of stories about people that use this when they shouldn't have. That controversy about what the effect it's going to have on search and rescue is for another time. As far as the literature that I've seen so far, they're not going to charge for the emergency calls. Obviously, if you make a false call, there's going to be some repercussions, I hope, but None of that's listed yet as far as what it'll actually cost. Now comparing that to a Garmin device, such as the 66i or even the InReach uh, Mini, that is only about $350, and this unit is about seven or $800. These can send a lot more information a lot more regularly. Before I get too far into the recreational use of the Garmin device, I wanna point out that the emergency process is essentially the same. For the Garmin, there's a SOS button on the side. You hold that down. You have a chance to cancel it within about 15 to 20 seconds. And then it will contact the emergency center. And that emergency center will initiate their process and communicate back to you, uh, inquiring what kind of emergency it is and what kind of response they need to send. If you do nothing, if you simply press the button down and can't do anything with the device, they will still initiate a rescue. 
Um, so even without having that communication back and forth, the rescue will begin uh, and your location information is sent directly to the center. So that part of it is essentially the same as the iPhone. It is just the advantage of the antenna that gives it the, uh, the greatest advantage in this case. The text messages that you send on here, depending upon which plan you have, and almost all the providers of satellite messaging services have a plan just like cell phones do, and you can have so many text messages that you can send in a month, um, all the way up to, I got the unlimited plan uh, from Garmin for at least one month, giving it a try, and it has been great to be able to send and receive. You can either use the unit by itself as a little standalone. It's got maps on it. Obviously, it's called GPS map, and it has the ability to send to uh, any phone number that you want. You can set that all up beforehand, or in a pinch, if you just got it right out of the box, you can just type in somebody's uh, number and send a message. Sending from the unit, as you might imagine, with this little keypad here is a little bit slow. Uh, you're going to be doing, you know, arrowing around to the letters and selecting them one by one. As compared to, the iPhone will let you type a lot. But the great thing about this device is that it will pair with your current iPhone. Doesn't matter just about which version from, I think, 6 on up. And you can use the messaging in the Garmin app on your phone to be able to message through here, up to the satellite, down to your friends, and all the way back. I was able to use this recently up in Alaska when I was on a small boat cruise with Uncruise on assignment. And there's plenty of times when we did not have cell reception because we're in these steep fjords on Baranoff Island and Chichikov Island, and there's just no reception. There's not a lot of cell towers out there either. Southeast Alaska is a little sparse. So this was able to send, even while I was underneath a little bit of an overhang, um, is able to get a GPS location, send that out as a tracking device uh, to my family, had a special map set up just so they can see what's going on. And then when I wanted to, I could type a uh, text message into my phone, send it through the Garmin out to my family. They got it. They can reply back. It's fairly quick, but it does cost a little bit more for the uh, subscription if you want unlimited. So which is better if these both offer satellite messaging? Right now, your handheld, standalone satellite messengers, especially the ones with maps, uh, is going to be a better choice for the next few years. The directional antenna on here is definitely going to be a little finicky when you really have to get a message out. You're going to have a much better operation and much better um, satellite signal with this big old chunky antenna. And that's kind of one of the things that's holding it back from getting onto a cell phone is the big antenna. But it works great for being able to text even when you're in, in a narrow fjord and you don't have much on either side of you, you can even text in a, <laughs> you wouldn't necessarily do it, but you could text in a city uh, with skyscrapers around. Um, it's still able to get enough of a signal in those situations. Here, it's going to be a little more finicky. It's going to be uh, basically what I would say is this is a very good backup for this. The battery life on here is excellent. It's going to outlast your phone, uh, even with all the tracking and maps going on on it. Uh, it's meant for maps. It's meant for satellite messaging so the battery is tuned to that. Your phone can do all kinds of things. You might be using it for taking pictures and doing all kinds of other messaging and, and recording and things like that. So you could run the battery down on your phone much quicker. So for the time being, your satellite messenger is the way to go if you're going into the backcountry, if you're going offshore, if you're going someplace where you know you're not going to have cell phone reception. Yet, the satellite messaging emergency service that they're putting into the phones is really intriguing. It's great from a uh, standpoint of a first step. So making it for emergency use only, they're going to be able to get some use cases out of that, fine tune it, and then as they are able to make the um, antennas stronger in these things, they'll be able to make it more of a regular service that they will eventually charge for, and you can use it for casual texting like you use the, uh, the Garmin device. I use this just to text my family, see what's going on, just as if I was texting directly from my phone. So that's it. Don't give up your individual satellite messaging service just yet. Still very useful but I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen with the iPhone and other phones in the years to come.